Hello world, Liu here, and today we'll be talking about 7 things I only recently knew about Python classes and object-oriented programming in general. Number 1. Reflected Arithmetic Operators So here I'm just going to create a dot class. So here I've created my dot class and I'm going to initialize a dot object. And right now let's do this, so dot plus 1 and let's print dot minus 1. So if I run this, I'm going to get the following output, apple and orange. So here, if I attempt to call dot plus one, I'm actually calling the magic add method. And if I call dot minus one, I'm actually calling the magic subtract method over here. However, did you also know that we have reflected arithmetic magic methods as well? So here, I'm just going to create this, define r add self x. And here I'm going to define r sub self x. So this r add and r sub methods are reflected arithmetic magic methods, and they happen if we do this instead. So here instead of dot plus one, let's do one plus dot. And here instead of dot minus one, we have one minus dot. So here, if we flip the sequence of our operation, we will get this instead. So here we have apple pie and orange juice. So when we call one plus dog, we are actually calling the magic method r add. And if we do one minus dog, we are actually calling the magic method r sub. There are other reflected arithmetic operators as well for the multiply, divide, and so on. Number two get attr versus get attribute so here let's just create a test class doc and let's define init self name h and next let's define the magic method get attr so here we have self and key turn key not found so here let's create a doc object so doc let's say rocky and five so let's print dot dot name and dot dot h. So if we run this as per normal, we will get what we expect, rocky and five. However, if we decide to run dot dot breed, which we did not define in our class, we will get this rocky five and key not found. So realize that key not found is actually from our get ATAR magic method. However, if we change this magic method to get attribute, and let's run this again, all of them will be key not found. So here, the main difference is that get attribute is always called, but get attr is called only if the attribute does not exist in our class. Number three, an alternative to super.init. So here, let's define two classes for our example. So class animal. So define init so self name and h name is equals to name self h is equals to h and next let's define a class that inherits from animal so define dog and let's make it inherit from animal so define init self name h and breed so here we will normally do this super which will get the animal class dot init so here, because init takes in name and age, we will simply pass in name and age here. And afterwards, because the animal's init method does not take in breed, we will need to manually set the breed attribute. Itself breed is equals to breed. However, what if for some reason we do not wish to use super.init? We could use the animal class here directly. So let's get rid of super and let's do animal. However, the main difference here is that we now need to take the self and we need to add it here. So now dog is equals to dog, rocky, five, and poodle. So if I run this, there should be no problem. So here, this could be useful if you do not simply wish to use the parent class init method. So this actually offers you more control of how your init method works. Number four, checking for child classes. So for our example here, let's create a bunch of classes that inherit from each other. So class animal pass, class dog, which inherits from animal, 
and we have a pass class cat which also inherits from animal and we pass and class German Shepherd which will inherit from dog and pass so here we can actually use the dot subclasses magic method in order to find all the child classes of a class dynamically for example let's do this so print animal dot underscore underscore subclasses underscore underscore and open and close bracket because this is a method so here i'm going to run this and i'm going to get dog and cat so notice that dog and cat are simply the subclasses or child classes of the animal class so similarly i can do this with dog and i'm going to get the german shepherd class and if i choose to do it with cat i'm going to get nothing so one thing to note is that only direct child classes will be included like animal dot subclasses not including german shepherd number five multiple inheritance so in python a child class can inherit from one or more parent classes so let's write a bunch of classes for our example so class a define test and self and let's print a next let's have a class b and define test self and let's print b and next let's have another class c and right now this inherits from both a and b so i'm just going to pass here so here the class c inherits from both class a and class b meaning that every single method from class a and every single method from class b will be passed on to c however note here that both a and b define this test method so if c inherits from both a and b what will happen to c's test method so here let's verify this so c and let's call c and dot test and if we run this we will get a so here because a and b's test method actually have the same name they will conflict and because we inherit from a first rather than b a's test method will actually win so this is known as the method resolution order or mro for short in python so in this case if i decide to switch a and b we will get a different result that being said in my opinion multiple inheritance in python will usually lead to confusion and headache so i just choose to not use it in my code number six the invert magic method and other binary magic methods so here let's create a simple dot class and let's define underscore underscore invert underscore underscore so self and it takes in nothing else and here let's return hello so let's say dog is equals to dog and let's say we print our dog normally and we will simply get the normal gibberish that we see so we get main dot dog object at blah 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 however to call this invert magic method we can use this twirly line so this twirly line also known as tilde stands for stands for bitwise not and is usually used to invert stuff so if we run this we will call our invert magic method and we will get this so next let's write a class that makes more sense class coordinate to define init so we have self x and y so let's just say this represents some coordinate on a plane so self x equals to x and self y is equals to y and define stir and let's do this return x is equals to self dot x and y is equals to self dot y so here let's create a coordinate c is equals to coordinate let's say 4 and 5 and let's print c and if we run this we will get x is equals to 4 and y equals to 5 and the reason why this is appearing is because of our stir magic method here so next let's define our invert magic method so here we have self and our invert magic method will return another coordinate so let's say return and here we have coordinate and here we have minus self x and minus self y so in order to call this invert magic method we simply add the tilde in front of c so if we run this we will get x is minus 4 and y is minus 5. number seven 
creating a class without the class keyword. So here's how a normal class is creating using the class keyword. So I'm just going to create class dot define init self name h self name is equals to name self h is equals to h and let's define a bug method so self and this one we print poof so here i can initialize my dog object like that so let's say rocky 5 and next if i call the bug method i'm going to print woof and here we have it we have woof However, there's actually another way that we can create a class without using the class keyword. And we can do this dynamically in Python. So I'm going to comment this out. And I'm going to define the init and bug methods first. And next, I'm going to create my dot class, but without using the class keyword. So dot is equals to type. So instead of checking the type of something, now we are going to pass in three arguments, which will make our type function create a class for us. So here, we first pass in the name of the class, and next we pass in bases, which is a list of class that this class will inherit from. So here, we just pass in an empty tuple. And finally, we pass in the dig, which contains all its methods. So here, init will point to init, and bug will point to bug. And if I run this once again, I'll simply get the same result. So this is just another way that we can create a class in Python. So thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python today. See you in the next one.